Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Look, I know two things. I know number one, my hair is crazy, and I know that this video is brought to you by Masterworks with a link in the description down below. But folks, this is mind-blowing. Within weeks, scientists at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research expect to announce that they have a new vaccine ready after nearly two years of work that could potentially protect against various different future pandemics, future variants, Omicron, you name it. Now look, I know we've got a lot of vaccine hesitancy in America, but hear this one out because this is wild. So apparently this new vaccine is a spike ferritin nanoparticle vaccine. Now, what this is, is a basically a, uh, a protein, uh, ferritin, which, which is f uh, kind of like iron found in your blood. I'm oversimplifying here, okay? But, uh, but basically, they take a protein in the shape of a soccer ball. And the, the soccer ball, uh, you know how the portions, some sides of the soccer ball are flat, like the various different sides? Well, imagine you had 24 sort of platforms or soccer ball faces, and then on these faces of the soccer ball, you attach different spikes. But instead of just attaching spikes of the alpha variant of COVID or the Delta variant, like vaccine makers constantly trying to, uh, you know, essentially follow what COVID is doing and trying to react in hindsight to what's happening. They're just sticking on 24 different viruses, COVID uh, or, or coronaviruses, mutations of coronaviruses in various different types of viruses to make your body prepared to attack anything that resembles these 24 different spikes, specifically coronaviruses and other viruses. It really teaches your immune system to recognize these different proteins. And folks, the first human trial, phase one, just completed with positive results. What you're really doing is you're providing multiple copies of different spikes, right? So your body recognizes all the different ones. Again, rather than just here's messenger RNA to try to help you be, you know, have efficacy against one type of virus, you're getting 24 in one basically, and not just 24 in one because these spikes can have overlaps to different variants, right? For example, one spike that your body recognizes might end up mutating into four or five or 10 different viruses. But because your body recognizes that one spike, you might be able to mount a defense against five to 10 of these different variants. And so if you get 24 spikes via the soccer ball uh, spike protein uh, uh, nanoparticle vaccine, you could potentially have immunity against a whole host of different viruses. Uh, and, and we could potentially end coronavirus style pandemics. And so far, we've got really positive data that these could be substantially better than mRNA vaccines, which is crazy. I'm just gonna be transparent. I've got Moderna and I'm like, well, dang, like I wish they could have come out with this thing earlier so I don't have to go mix and match now and get something else. Obviously, this is not even close to emergency use authorization uh, or FDA approval, but folks, we, we gotta talk about some of the differences here and some of the early results that we're seeing. I do quickly wanna just give a shout out to Masterworks. Thank you, Masterworks, for sponsoring this video. More information on Masterworks in the link in the description down below. You'll also find all of my sources for this video in the description down below. I just want to mention that, look, you all know that I've uh, documented growing a portfolio from $0 to $52 million on this channel. I learned a lot about the stock market and housing market, and that's what we talk about on this channel is finance and building wealth. COVID is such an important part of this, and, and it's so important to understand how to diversify as well. And, and that's why Masterworks has been a very interesting partnership and, and very exciting partnership because it is such a convenient and easy way to diversify your portfolio into art, fine art, as an investment, which usually only billionaires have access to. So here's how Masterworks works. Masterworks basically acquires artwork ranging from $1 to $30 million. They then securitize that, which basically means bundle it together, and then they slice it up into little pieces or slivers of pie, kind of like buying fractional shares of, of a company's stock, right? Uh, and then they allow you to buy those shares. And their goal after three to 10 years is to sell that for a profit. Of course, you could sell on a secondary market, which they have your shares as well if you wanted to. But uh, now you have very easy and readily available access to investing in fine art for a very small amount of money. You don't have to start with millions of dollars. You could start with hundreds of dollars. Check out Masterworks in the description 
down below. Okay, folks, look, we got to talk more about some of the, the initial results of uh, this, this, this trial and some of the information that we have here. So uh, first, this vaccine, this SPFN vaccine is expected to remain stable at a range of temperatures that don't need refrigeration like mRNA vaccines. See, Pfizer vials need to be stored between 35 and 46 degrees. Moderna vials need to be stored between 36 and 46 degrees and previous versions of mRNA had to be stored at like negative four degrees. Well, the Army has released documents showing positive re results so far on the SPFN vaccines and clinicaltrials.gov shows that 72 individuals have been enrolled in the phase one trial. It's normal to have a smaller number of, of trials during a phase one uh, in this study uh, or trial. And they're, of course, either receiving the vaccine or the placebo. And in a recent research article posted on the 16th of December on science.org, I'll also link that down below, we had over 50 scientists come together and report that two high dose 50 microgram SPFN vaccine doses given 28 days apart elicited neutralizing activity that was, quote, an order of magnitude higher than that of prior infection, potentially as much as 10 times the neutralizing effect of prior illness. Now, remember, folks, neutralizing antibodies are really good because they can prevent you from getting sick. If you can neutralize uh, a, a pathogen that enters your body, you could potentially not become sick. This is different from binding antibodies, which if, let's say, a pathogen enters your body and your body binding antibodies are like, oh, bad, alarm, alarm. And then your your white blood cells come to fight and kill and crush the enemy, right? That's just the difference. You, you kind of want neutralizing because it, it just eliminates it before you get that white blood cell response, which gives you symptoms. I'm over, way oversimplifying here, okay? But anyway, to potentially have 10x the neutralizing effect of prior illness against viruses or, or, or coronaviruses, really, really incredible. And I know I'm, I'm getting a little excited about this because this is just mind blowing to me. We don't, we don't know if this is, this is, you know, exactly what the results are of these clinical trials yet. Those will be released within a few weeks, hopefully. We hope they're positive. I mean, imagine this comes out and it's like 90 plus percent eff uh, uh, efficacious uh, or 98% or efficacious because you have so many different spikes and, and you're effective against Omicron and future variants and past variants. I mean, we, we, we could end pandemics. But anyway, before we get excited, let's continue with the research. Uh, the uh, scientists have reported that the SPFN vaccine in animal studies was also shown to lead to no detectable levels of a virus in the animals of ex or in the airways of exposed animals. 48 hours of exposure. This is compared to the control group that was exposed in, the s in exactly the same way, but they had all of a sudden substantial. Uh, levels of a virus in their airways. So in other words, you have the real potential of, of having exposure and then having no viral load uh, with this SPFN vaccine. Now, I'm, I'm not sponsored by this vaccine. It's, it's you know, the army's making it. I know there are going to be a lot of skeptical folks around this. I'm just excited to share the research here. So uh, now there's also uh, information here. Uh, it's worth noting from the National Institute of Health published in May of this year, showing that the 24 faces of this sort of soccer ball are called receptor binding domains or RBDs, and that RBDs can really neutralize a whole host of different coronaviruses and future mutations. And uh, in the same report, they mentioned that nanoparticles enhanced immune response and ultimately had substantially the neutralizing antibody effect of not just prior illness, which we already talked about, but also mRNA vaccines. Again, neutralizing antibodies, kind of the ones you want. Now, in May, the National Institute of Health said, quote, with further development, a nanoparticle vaccine could prevent epidemics from a wide range uh, of coronaviruses. Uh, these uh, have also been shown to prevent SARS from infecting monkeys, these vaccines. And obviously, this is, we're just through the first human trial, so there's a lot, a lot left to do. Uh, but I have to say, exciting nonetheless. Now, Defense One, uh, highly factual, uh, at least if you media bias, do a media bias search for Defense One, they're, they're generally rated as either high in fact or highly factual. Defense One reports that uh, the, the animal trials completed earlier this year were completed with positive results as well. So far, the phase one human trials, which tested the vaccine against Omicron and other variants, ended up with positive results and the trial results are under review to be published very soon. So I have to say folks, this announcement of these SPFN vaccines 
Obviously, it's, it's expected to take uh, a lot of time. We don't know exactly what the effectiveness is going to be. If it comes in at 50% effective, you know, it's it's not going to be that interesting to people. You got to manufacture the vaccine. You got to distribute it. People got to want to take it. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot going on here, right? Uh, it's kind of coming late in the cycle here. But an SPFN vaccine could totally change the way that we think about vaccines going forward, uh, especially if it kicks the butt of these mRNA vaccines. And it, it took substantially longer to put together. So uh, there are going to be folks that either think you're getting a much higher quality microchip or you're getting a, a, a vaccine that's uh, that's potentially really resilient. Now, there's no clear indication yet in terms of uh, how long this sort of vaccine would last if you'd have to get a booster after six months or if you'd have to get a new one after a year or every year. But so far, there's a lot of promise on these. And what I'd recommend is you pay attention to SPFN vaccines. Not only pay attention to them, but folks, when this announcement comes, there could be a big move in uh, recovery stocks, you know, your cruise lines, your airlines, your hotels, and so on. So uh, pay attention to this. I think this is big news coming down the pike. And again, that's spike ferritin nanoparticle vaccines, SPFNs. And of course, check out Masterworks in the link down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, consider sharing the video, folks. See you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.